one second, folks. Uh, give me a little clap action there, Rick. Okay. Lance versus Rick, session seven. Excellent. All right, now what I'm going to do here... Well, hold on. Just this, what's going on with the veins and stuff, this is what happens when you have OCD about going to the gym and you have a bacterial gut infection that makes you shit out any carbs you eat. If I eat any bread or pasta or a freaking cookie, then there's a shit storm and, uh, you know, I just, you get, I'm being whittled away to nothing. Rick is just being modest. He actually has a full set of DVDs on how to achieve a ripped contest look uh, that you can purchase for thousands yeah, of just dollars. Yeah, um, you're talking right into the pole. The, you see the pole? Okay, all right. Let's just be cognizant of that. Okay, okay. turn your head this way. So, um, uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set my timer to five minutes and uh, I'll give you a signal when the five minutes goes off and then we'll do a two minute wrap up. Yeah, oh, I, what do you think? Well, we do tend to go round and round the same shit, but I don't know if we want to be held to uh, five minutes on stuff. Yeah, I don't either. I think this is. You know, the thing is, we haven't even gotten a single review. We don't know. Maybe people love it the way we've been doing it. Why don't we wait until somebody says, I hate it, it's too long, and then we'll change. Well, let's, let's try it this way. This I mean, is, the only review we're getting is JD. What's this? Yeah, but JD knows his shit. Let's try this. Is, but we're not idiots either. This is session seven. Let's, let's, we've done six, you know, with no limits, and let's just try it and see what happens. I have no idea. Well, can we compromise? Why don't we make it eight minutes? Well, I think that... Well, if you want to be the, if you want to take on, we can just change the credit to Lance Richland being the director. I'm happy with that. But if, as long as I'm the, I'm getting the director credit, I save me five minutes. But if you want to make it eight minutes, we'll be, I'll be real happy to just be your camera operator. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I mean, it's just a reality. Otherwise, why am I here? Then I'm just a camera operator. We don't want that. Well, okay, GD, you're threatening to resign. No, I'm not. I'm not resigning. I'm just resigning as director, not as. I'm not the project. I love the project. But. You don't want this. You said off camera. You don't want this to be Hannity, where everybody gets a certain, a little limited amount of time to. We're just not sitting there. You know, the thing you don't realize, JD, is those people on Hannity that are talking in two minute things. They've been researched. They've been prepped. You're bringing, you were bringing you in to talk about gay marriage. And they've got 10 points ready to go. They're going to spit them out as quickly as possible in two minutes. That's why it's jumpy and punchy and exciting. We're not doing that. So we're, you know, we're much more like Rogan or Corolla where we're just meandering a little bit. Except not as talented as Corolla. Okay, fair enough. JD, Does how about Corolla do it? Does Corolla perseverate on one subject for... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Corolla can talk forever, but Corolla does it entertainingly because Corolla's a fucking genius. No, Where I... We might be geniuses in some areas, but not at talking. Well, the thing is, though, J.D., how do you know people aren't going to like this, the, the thing? Well, I'm not saying they're not going to like it. I'm just saying we can have some, some options. When I was driving over with Rick, I said, well, well, let's try this, and that way we have it already. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's compromise. All right. Why don't we say seven minutes for each topic, even no, though I hate the idea? I will, I will compromise. I'll say six minutes. All right, let, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Okay, fine. Okay, six minutes. And I think the first topic should be gentrification. What do you think, Rick, on gentrification? Uh, I, I, you, you like gentrification because you were just part of a, a dramatic production that focused on gentrification. I'm okay with that. I'm um, not. I refuse. It's too boring. But no, wait, because I, I, it's not too boring. I remember I was in New York in, from 1986 to 1989, and I remember the old Times Square, which was nothing but filth and porn stores. All right, and I you've got to... something to say. Go ahead. Use gentrification. All right, all right. So I remember they... No, no, just wait until I... we're filming. Are we, 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 we are filming. filming. We've been this filming time? this whole fucking time. Oh, my God. And all those things I said about stringing people up and murdering minorities, that's on right now? You, you don't... Okay, all right. All right. No, you didn't say that. Maybe we'll bleep that out. Oh. You didn't really say that. But like, but like the first TV job I ever had, one of my jobs was to go down to Times Square and, and maybe buy a little bit of porn for the producers. 
because everybody let you know. And I got to go into, I was also researching. Um, we had a, a, a speed round that involved uh, giving the, uh, the, the, the name of a porn parody of a movie and then contestants had to give the real name of the movie. So I spent a lot of time in the, in the horrible, gross porn stores of Times Square. Can you Square. give us some of those? Can you remember any of them? I don't know. One that didn't need to be changed at all was Eight Men Out. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, shortly thereafter, after we left New York, um, Times Square got disnified. It got cleaned up. And now all of New York, when we lived there, we lived in the, on the, oh, I got a bug in my nose, but in the Upper West Side, and there were just crack vials everywhere. And there were, you couldn't go to Alphabet City, and you didn't want to go north of a certain street number. And, um, and now every place is nice. New York is a freaking paradise. And it's all safe and everything. And, um, but, but, you know, con a, a, an empty apartment you could have bought for $70,000 in 1987, not that we could because we didn't have 70000 in 87, now goes for 700000 or $1.1 million. Um, so, yeah, it's a paradise of sorts. Um, you know, everybody's bodily fluids are still on every single, like, surface of, of the subway. But uh, there's, you, you can live a nice life if you have a shitload of money in Manhattan. Um, but somewhat tougher if you don't have a shitload of money. Even Brooklyn, um, you're trading you know, safety for money. You're, you're buying safety. You're, everything's more safer and more delightful with artisanal everything. Um, but it just costs out the butt. And the people who can't afford it, you know, they end up, I guess, in Jersey, where things are still dangerous as shit. Okay. So. Um, so that means you think it's a good thing, but it's bad for people that are broke. Well, it's a thing. Um, I think there are other processes that are you know, the gentrification affects people in American cities, but then you have other things that, you look at the other forces that push people from one place to another, war, uh, the coming, you know, climate change stuff that's going to put move people around the planet. Um, Which I don't believe in, by the way. Yeah, but I mean, the, 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 the oceans are going to go up by some, and you're going to lose miles, you're going to lose millions of square miles of coastline. And that's going to displace people. And, and growing seasons are going to be messed with. And there's going to be certain, there, you've got the acidification of the oceans. You've got that all. I, oh. I think you went a little off topic. Uh, there, right? well, I did, but I'm. What do you think of gentrification? Well, I mean, if there's anything to think about, it just means that a lot of poor people are going to be displaced. But a lot of areas that were gradually destroying the city are going to be revitalized. I mean, uh, so it, it benefits in some ways and it, it hurts some people. Um, but uh, I, I, you know, I have to tell you, when I was a kid, you, you, you know, downtown was a, was a nightmare. Now you can go down there and have a, have a decent experience. Uh, and there's still poor people down there, so uh, you know how. Why is it bad to make the city nicer? There's a hopeful deal, which is that automation, I think, has, is tending to very slowly make being poor maybe a little less awful than it was. I mean, nobody wants to go back and live in 1931, unless you're going to be rich as shit. You know, in the depths of the depression. Mm -hmm. People can't afford food or clothing or adequate shelter. And, you know, if you had a nickel, I guess you'd go to the movies. And that's what everybody did just all the time mm -hmm. to escape their wretched reality. Now you can escape your wretched reality you know, all the time with Netflix or uh, just apps on your phone. Um, we can hope that that trend continues that as, hello microphone, 
microphone fell down. And the phone is ringing. That means five minutes are up. Okay. Good. All right. All Let's right, so we got to reset. Are we all? Or you got to shut down the camera because we only have a limited amount of time. I'm ready. All right, Lance versus Rick, session 7.2. Uh, evolution. All right, well. Um, I think evolution is over for humans, and mostly for the rest of the planet, um, but particularly for humans because um, the differences among people that, that you know, evolution is based on reproductive success. And, well, for one thing, reproductive success is not as tied into our physical characteristics as it used to be. People who have you know money or other stuff fame um good job this stop the camera yeah sure we oh, the again yeah all right because we don't we have a limited amount of time so. okay and go, go. lance versus rick 7.2 continued all right so i want to veer away from evolution and ask lance do you believe that the average iq among different races varies? Um, well, uh, I, I have to be honest, I don't know enough about the efficacy of the testing process. There you go, That's a, I, I agree with that answer. IQ is a messy fucking thing. Okay. And people who try to make IQ arguments based on like national average IQ usually have some ugly agenda. That's thing one. Thing two is um, race is super malleable. It's one of the things that, that shifts under evolution the fastest. It only takes a few tens of thousands of years for uh, black people to go white or white people to go black, depending on um, you know, environmental conditions. Though that was in the old days when evolution still ruled human progress or human development, but now cultural evolution has taken over and, and you know, you can fly from, you know, some place where most people used to be black to where most people are, are white in, in six hours. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, mobility and the, the, what we're going to be doing to our, our genes is, is renders, you know, evolution, further evolution, natural evolution moot. Um, also rendering the whole idea of arguing about, you know, which race is smarter is that uh, our technology will make all of us smarter than everybody that came before eventually. First, it makes us into idiots because we spend all our time texting, but eventually we will, you know, use tech to, to make ourselves smarter so it won't be what race you belong to if that was ever a factor and it's you, I, I don't believe that it necessarily is, but it's going to be just what apps you've plugged into your brain and what crap you've plugged into your brain. And as we all kind of merge into the global thought blob of the future. Well, okay. Um, I, uh, I don't know as much about IQ. Obviously, you're an expert, you're an expert in IQ. But I will say something. I think Jews are smarter than other races. Okay. I'm convinced of it. And I'll tell you why. But do you think it's I genetic or cultural? I don't know that part. Well, that's, that's a big deal because if it's 100% cultural, then you can take people and raise them like the Jews of old. Or, you know, some people like to say Asians are the new Jews. Mm-hmm. And with it, and you can most a lot of people would argue that that's like cultural stuff. Maybe, that if, maybe it is. Maybe you can just. But but the thing is, is we'd have to figure out what Jews did to raise so many geniuses. Well, I can tell you one horrible statistic is that the greatest coral, the, the of all the variables that influence SAT scores, uh -huh. the one that has the highest correlation is parental income. The SAT might as well be a measure of how rich your parents are. Really? So if you have a stable household, 
with a lot of, you know, maybe books, maybe a lot of media, just a lot of less, none of the chaos that comes with being poor, mm -hmm. then you're free to develop your abilities to a greater extent than somebody growing up in, in the conservatives' uh, vision of, of inner city Chicago, where, you know, you're in between, you know, doing algebra problems, you're dodging bullets. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know why that's a conservative vision. I mean, I don't think anybody thinks that the, the poor areas of Chicago are great. But, okay. but, but I, you know, I'll tell you, I have an opinion about this, and it's, it's taken me until I was in my 50s to develop this opinion, because I'm Jewish, and I never thought much of it. And I'll tell you how I came to this conclusion. This is very important. When I was young, People used to say, well, Jews are really good. They, it, they're really intelligent. They, they win a lot of Nobel Prizes for physics. And, you know, that's undisputable. Okay, fine. And, and they, they go into the professions a lot. But, you know, people from other races do that. People from India and, and Asia do that. So I didn't think much of it. And then people say, well, besides Einstein, there was Sigmund Freud and there was... Uh, Karl Marx, uh, I'm not proud of Karl Marx, but he was ge biologically Jewish. And uh, Jonas Salk, you know, the, uh, the cure of polio. And I thought, well, okay, those are all scientists. And, you know, and then they were entertainers like Bob Dylan. And and these Leonard are people Cohen. who you kind of like thought about when you were a kid? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, but what, uh, take well, a kid wait, wait, from... Wait, wait, there's more. Okay, Let but hold on. Take point. a kid from Chicago who's not Jewish. Is that kid necessarily thinking of those guys? Well, let me just finish my point okay. because I don't think it's relevant. But so my point is though is that I never thought that Jews were good at anything besides numbers and law and and, and uh, certain sciences. And then when I was in my fifties, I found out that arguably the greatest painter of all time was Jewish, Velasquez. Diego Velazquez, and he's always been known as the greatest Spanish painter he's from the 17th century. Turns out he wasn't Spanish. He was, the, he was the son of two Portuguese Jews that moved to Spain and converted to avoid persecution. So that means that Jews have been great musicians, great, arguably the greatest artist, the greatest psychologist, the greatest physicist, um, and I'm thinking to myself, well, what the hell is going on? They, you know, they, there has to be some... There, it's not possible for Jews not to be among the smartest people on earth. There's, and uh, by any measure. And so the question is, how, how is that happening? And furthermore, they're not just smart in Germany in the 1920s. They're smart in Spain in the, seven, in the 1600s. They're smarter in, in you know, various fields in the U.S. They excel. So something's going on. And I, I, I honest to God, never believed it and never gave a damn. But, but what is happening? Why, Diana, why, why didn't you mention uh, Mo Berg, who was really smart at baseball? I'd never heard of Mo Berg. I'm not smart enough to know that Mo Berg well, was I mean, Berg. You're, you're thinking all these, like, smart, talented Jews. Yeah. Um, and that, that, you even know these people. Jews and that you identify as a Jew or hope to and aspirationally means that you've got a certain you've got models for what you'd like to do. You want to be like Velasquez. Okay. All right. Well, you take somebody from a different culture and their models aren't necessarily going to be Einstein and Velasquez and Freud and Marx. They might be, you know, NBA guys. And there's a thing called the Flynn effect. I think I've mentioned it before, where um, the average IQ of the entire planet went up 15 points in the 50 years after World War II because everybody became more literate in the ways of thinking. It's not that people, their brains didn't get better. Their, they became schooled in how to think in the modern world. The whole planet got hip to it. And you know, you know, now if you offered 
like a bunch of role models to people around the planet. Who do you want to be like? Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, um, the Google guys, Bryn and whatever. Um, you'd get a lot of people, regardless of race, um, saying, yeah, I want to be like those guys. Those are my models. Also women, Rosalind Franklin, though she didn't code. But, um, but, but the- Wasn't Hedy Lamar Jewish? Probably. Okay, go ahead. She, she was an act, a bombshell actress, super hot. From Austria, and, that developed all kinds developed, of um, things. Sig packet switching, which is uh, essential to cell phone technology. She was trying to help the Allies win World War II in between looking super hot in the movies. Yeah, I'm not sure she was Jewish, though. I'm just... Anyway. anyway um, but you're, what's your point? Under the Flynn effect, it's how chaotic your home life is and what, what role models you have. It's, it's almost all cultural. Flynn himself says, our grandparents weren't idiots with their IQs averaging 15 points less than ours. They just didn't have the cultural literacy that we have now. Well, that's true. But, but here's my problem with this. When, when I found out that Velasquez was Jewish, I really kind of freaked out because Velasquez was competing with hundreds of other Spanish artists. I mean, there was no, it was bizarre for a Jew to even go into the field of painting. And what does he do? He becomes the greatest painter of all time. According to some, some lists. But, but, yeah, but, but a lot of lists. And so, and he's not my favorite painter, uh, but my point is, why is it that this Jew goes in there in a field that no Jew's ever been in and automatically becomes the best of all time. What, what I mean... He, what did his what, parents do for a living? They were, um... They were like, uh... A, I think a, his father, I think, was a lawyer, some sort of middle management, middle... All right. so uh, it's, an aid to aristocrats in some way. All right, works with aristocrats. Yeah. Stable family. Okay. Um, you could argue that there are cultural aspects of being Jewish. In fact, there are jokes about being Jewish. You know, the Jews stay married even though um, the fucking has stopped <clears throat> and that the, the husband has to beg the wife. Um, but still, the family is important. You take cultures where um, you have tight families because of, of, of the culture. Um, the offspring of those families have a leg up on... I mean, the Velasquez family, they were, they were well-to-do. They worked with aristocrats. Okay. And that gives kids a leg up as they pursue their interests. No, well, all right, maybe, maybe. It's, and it's, it's, I mean, I, I don't have any dog in this fight. I mean, if, if, if there's some secret to raising Jews that makes them smart, uh, that's fine by me. Let's raise everybody that way if that is what we want. Smart people. Well, to get back to evolution, it's not what we want. It's what the culture is going to drag us into. In that, um, the, as technology gets more powerful and AI gets more powerful, we are going to become more and more tied to AI and everybody is going to accept the voluntary Amish, the technological Amish. Okay. who are too freaked out by what's going to happen. We're all going to be dragged into a world of increased smartness. And so... Yeah, I've, I've actually heard that when IQ tests were administered to Jews in the 1910s and 20s, they scored lower. Yeah, they sucked ass because... Because they weren't used to the culture. Right. So all the questions were a little bit culturally biased and that they would miss them because they were from some you know, village in Poland. And right, they, didn't they were, know the deal. like one, like, question on an early IQ test was, uh, what make of car has this uh, hood ornament? Mm -hmm. You don't see that many cars in, you know, Gdansk. Yeah, but haven't, haven't they, they accounted for all these no, things? No, 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 it was, it was a terrible fucking but time. But no, in modern tests, haven't they accounted? Well, they have tests. Because in modern tests, you still score higher. Well, uh, there are tests that are supposed to be culture fair. There's one called the Raven 
uh, matrices. Ma and, and what is what are the results of that test? It's is, are there any cultures that score higher? Well, um, depending on the age of the test takers, boys score higher than girls on on the Raven. My kid took the Raven and and scored high, but not high enough to qualify for certain. Um, LA public school programs and we had to research the Raven and show that you know that's a, that's a, it might try to be culture fair but it's a test that boys outperform girls on and so, so it's know, not gender fair so no because to depend and then we don't know whether it's you know cultural or genetic or whatever but at certain ages boys do better well let me ask you a question now um, because this is you know Given the complexity of the issue, sometimes you've got to fall back on what you've experienced. And I have to say this, in my lifetime, the, the, the smartest people I knew had the highest IQs. It just, it just, it's sad that it has to be that way, but that's the way it's worked out. Well, there's all now, sorts of... No, 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 and don't say, but what about the person that plays drums incredibly well. What about him? Isn't that smart? No, I'm saying the people you could talk for hours with about any subject that knew 10 languages and could, you know, make a rocket ship. They were always people with very high IQs. Well, so there is a correspondence. Well, yeah, there's a correspondence, but it's 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 a messy one. It's there's and there's cart before horse arguments. Like I was a losery kid, I was terrible on the playground, had trouble making well, I got bullied a lot. I stayed in. I didn't like sports or recess. I read all the time. I was ecstatic in third grade when I became nearsighted and I could have glasses like my other nerdy friends. And I was double ecstatic in sixth grade when I had to get bifocals because I refused to take off my glasses when I, and, and, but I had, I was a little bit lonely and I felt a little bit persecuted, but like my mom, like at one point, you know, I don't know if she was trying to make me feel better or whatever, and um, but she told me I had the highest IQ in the sixth grade, mm -hmm. um, and that only served to reinforce my orientation towards indoor kid, IQ-y, read all the time stuff. So I knew a lot more stuff than the kids who were out on the playground. If me from the future had shown up to talk to 11-year-old me and say, look, if you ever want to get laid before you, you hit 20, you need to see about you know, taking your glasses off every once in a while, maybe doing some push-ups, maybe learning how to learn how to kick a football. Um, you, you know, maybe you don't respect sports or you don't like the, and you, you've suffered in PE, but suck it up and uh, become a sport boy. Well, okay, but, but how does this, so you're saying there, there, are, there are disadvantages to having No, I'm saying IQ, that. But did couldn't the, you be both? Couldn't you, couldn't you be? I could have, but I did, it took IQ? me. Yeah, but I'm saying that, that there were all sorts of reinforcing factors that, that weren't about how smart I was, but were about how socially bad I was. And, and uncoordinated oh, I, I was. See. So in other words, you were sort of forced to spend a lot of time doing the things that the IQ test tests for. Yeah, and in fact, across the street from my elementary school was the university with more psych majors and more psych grad students than any other major. And sometimes they would, their thesis project would be, I'm going to write a new IQ test and let's test it out on the kids across the street. And so I got pulled out of class again and again because I loved fucking IQ tests. Um, which you did well at, so you began to like them even more. Yeah, so I've taken, I don't know, 50, 60, 80, I don't know. And, and, shit. and so what this says, though, is that a culture whose most, the most valued thing in that culture is hockey yeah. would, would not produce as many geniuses as a culture where the most valued thing in that culture is how many lines from the Bible they can memorize. Wayne Gretzky's dad built him a backyard hockey rink. We're gonna, you like hockey, I like hockey. Let's just build a fucking rink and you are gonna practice hockey as much as you desire. 
So Wayne Gretzky got his, his, his 10,000 hours of practice, you know, by the time he was 15 or something. Okay, so what you're saying is there's no genetic component. No, there, there probably is some genetic component, but there are all sorts of other components that get mi mixed in there. Okay. Well, I, you know what? That's what Charles Murray says. Yeah, but Charles Murray uses his argument to say that, you know, we don't let frickin' people from black countries run their own affairs because they got something Does bad in their head. Does he say that? He argues all sorts of unsavory shit. Is he wrong? Yeah, he's, he's, making, he's making IQ tests and a national average IQs do all sorts of things that are beyond IQs um, sphere of legitimacy. Okay, so it's not possible to determine that, like I read that somewhere that Japan has the highest national IQ, and you're saying that's bullshit. Well, it, it might be true, but it, there are all sorts of cultural reasons that, and, but and what IQ. But what is he, he's, I, does he care what the cultural reasons are? Does it even, is that even part of his study? He, he, it's, he, ar, he wants to argue that some races are inferior and need to be like shepherded or, uh, and, the, the mess that is IQ um, doesn't really, I don't think, allow that kind of analysis. And it becomes immaterial because all our IQs will be doubling in the next 30 years as we get, as we enter the chip in your brain Borg era. I, okay, I was listening to, that's a separate issue. I was listening to a, a black anthropologist the other day and she said that Charles Murray is totally wrong because biology and IQ have nothing to do with one another. You can't, you can't, uh, you, the, you know, something as complex as, a, as biology and as complex as IQ, they, they just don't run in the genes. They're not, they're not connected whatsoever. What do you think about that? That's possible, but, um... It, it, it's people like to say because they like to go to the default percentage of 50% nature and 50% nurture. Okay. And then they do studies and they push it one way or the other. And, and if I had to, I don't know, do some split, I'd go, I don't know, 20 or 30% nature and 70% nurture, but maybe not. And, and really at this point, the answer should be who gives a fuck because the end of purely natural intelligence is upon us. And everybody quit worrying about that shit and worry about how we're going to live in a world where the smartest beings are the most augmented with AI. I, you know what, I just, I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm one of those people that doesn't believe this shit. <laughs> And the reason is I'm one of those people that doesn't believe this shit. What do you mean we're going to be augmented? I don't want a wire sticking up my ass. Yeah, but you, you, you've, you? you're already, people are already augmented by the shit in their hands. You're augmented like the best way to drive via Waze. And the, the, the best price on a mattress via some app on your... Or th you're already augmented. It's just how you're augmented is going to change and become more intimate. Okay. I mean, you my know, wife I, gets... I, 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 wait, wait. Uh, let me talk a, a bit. Oh. I, I have noticed the only difference, and I will grant you this, because we've talked about this, and I agree with you. The only difference is people are able to look up things with lightning speed. Like, you, you can be talking to the dumbest person on earth, and in two minutes, they'll have a lecture um, why Hitler lost World War II, and they'll have 30 articles on it, and they'll be able to read it to you. And you'll think, well, it's a dumb person, but they've got the facts. What can you do? Now, is that intelligence? Is that that's augmented intelligence? At some point, whereas nobody used to go. Remember to the those library. commercials with for Palm Olive, where uh, the the manicurist tells the uh, the lady, "You're soaking in it." Okay. All right. So you're if you're soaking in information all the time, it's hard to believe that you can stay a complete idiot. Um, my frickin' wife gets. Uh, she gets emails on her wrist now, or text messages on her wrist. Okay. And uh, within 10 years, we're going to get information coming to us via contact lenses. 
and we, we are smarter in a lot of ways. Our, our, our tolerance for, for simplicity and plot in entertainment is low as shit. You tr try to make a, a, like. You don't need to have your hand like that. Okay. Try to make. Well, it props me up. Oh, but okay. a, you know, try to make a bunch of kids sit through a movie from 1971. They'll go nuts with boredom. We're saturated. You know what, though? I, there, this is a very important thing, though, because I think plots are a lot more uh, stupid these days. If anything, culture is much more stupid. If anything, the culture of the 19th century was the most intellectual period in our history, in human history. Are you kidding me? You had... The Flynn effect. IQ had, went up 15 points in the last 50 years. Yeah, but why are people such fucking idiots now? I mean, if you read the letters from the Civil War, people were infinitely more articulate, more thoughtful. I mean, they, they yeah, were... Yeah, but we'd still beat their asses on IQ tests. Well, I don't care. Then I, then I don't care. I, I and if you put people, and, and, if you took Civil War people and put them in an escape room versus people from now, we'd beat them most of the time. An escape room? It's, it's this dumb fucking party activity where you take a, you and your friends get together and you get locked in a room and you have to solve puzzles to get out. How do you know that they wouldn't be as good? They're the, they were far, people were far more resourceful in those days. I mean, they, they were far more resourceful. They were far more articulate. As the politicians were infinitely more intelligent, the, their, their philosophy was, was clearer. I mean, they were wrong about slavery, but, but they, they loved their country, they loved freedom. They're not like the little socialists running around today. These goddamn little social justice warriors that are 22 don't know a damn thing about life or politics or the world. I wouldn't trust them to, to, well, to go to the mailbox. Well, politics is a swamp right now. No, it's not. It's it doesn't swamp. attract it's the best people. It's a swamp if you've been brainwashed by the socialists. Oh, do you love who holds public office right now? I, you know what? I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in Trump, but I do love Ted Cruz, and I do like Trump, and he might turn out to be fine. No, but let's talk about, I mean, the, the frickin', I mean, there aren't a lot of profiles in courage in the Senate right now. There are not. You're right about that. All right, and I think maybe we wrap at this point, go to another thing. Yeah, okay. What's so our next go. topic, JD? And we'll, 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 let's, let me step out and we'll right. shut down the camera for a sec. Okay. okay, we're ready. I'm set. Speed. Lance versus Rick, 7.3. All right, well, we got some uh, current events. We have the impeachment. We can talk about Pence special counsel, and the tr Trump trip right. to Saudi Arabia, Roman right. Israel. Let's, let's, I guess, start with the impeachment, because that's the juiciest thing. Okay. Um, we're, we're taping this in, in towards eh, May 21st of 2017. Trump's daily approval has been under 40% on the Gallup poll for the past eight days. Um, he said some dumbass stuff about the Russians, but now he's overseas. We'll see if that helps his standing. Um, liberal editorials are bemoaning the lack of, of courage of Republicans that uh, compared to the Republicans of, of, of Nixon's uh, potential impeachment. So that's where we are. <laughs> well, well that, that's like, that's, you're, they're mad at the Republicans for not wanting to impeach Trump because you imagine that he did something he didn't even do. Well, hold why, on, just a second, hold on, hold on, hold on. We don't know what he did at this point. He's only been president for four months. Watergate took something like 18 months to play out. Um, so it, it's... I know it's a liberal thing to say, but it's too early to really tell what exactly got said well, what or did. What is it that you th imagine he did? Let's start with that, it's since you're this hot for impeachment. I, I didn't say I'm hot for impeachment, though. Um, I just was setting up the, the situation. Well, a bunch, of, a bunch of dirty, underhanded Democrats are 
trying to do anything they can to undermine Trump, uh, and they've made up a lot of crap. I mean, well, he, Trump he, hasn't helped in some of the shit he's done. He didn't done. do a thing. What, what, Trump? Are you still trying to convince me that Trump is a Russian dupe? That he's a spy working for Russia? I mean, are you, are you still presenting that to us? I, I doubt that he's a, a spy working for Russia. Well, that's but, big of you. But we don't know how embroiled with Russia his people were. Manafort taking I don't know, 12 million bucks from pro-Russian people from Ukraine seems to be a possible thing. Yeah, but he's um, not, Flynn, Man, Manafort's not part of the Trump but, administration. But he was Trump's main guy for during the uh, the, the during a month or two of okay. the uh, election. I, I will admit that I don't know that much about Manafort, but I do know that he was a paid political consultant during a political campaign. All the people working for Trump and for Clinton have worked for other countries. That's their job, is to, is to get people elected. And so they go all over the world helping people. What, what, and we, at the time he was doing that, Russia and Ukraine and all these countries are not, um, it's not illegal to do that. We're not at war with them. No, but somebody pays you 12 million bucks and you know, maybe you kind of like them for paying you 12 million bucks. Well, but if, if but well, first Flynn of all, gets well, Flynn gets paid by Turkey and then yeah. then influences rulings on on matters US matters involving Turkey. Well, he was let go though. Yeah. So I mean, I I don't understand. I mean, uh, at the time I thought letting go of Flynn was was strange decision and I, I'm still not convinced it was a good thing to do but you're you're saying Trump has to resign because a guy that he fired uh, <laughs> no, may no, have done no. something and you don't even know what that was I did. what did Trump have to do with this well let's find out I you love keep this. saying let's find out but we're, it's like, and we're gonna find out quite a bit oh okay well, I'm ready man I'm excited who knows? We'll find out. I mean, come on, Rick. Well, you, I mean, you like to debunk everything related to Trump and Russia, yet you, you love anything involving Hillary and Russia. You believe Hillary in Russia more than you believe Trump in Russia. Well, I know that the Crimea is now part of Russia, and Obama and Clinton did nothing about it. That's a whole country. Let me finish my sentence. That's a whole portion of a country. Okay that no longer belongs to the country it used to belong to. And when, when Obama had a chance to arm the Ukrainians so they could fight back with sophisticated weaponry, he just did nothing. And, and, and on the other hand, you've got weird rumors that have no evidence behind them whatsoever of something you don't even know happened. And, and, and you're telling me that, that I'm a, a conspiracy that I'm, I'm, that they are somehow comparable. I'm saying it's early days, in looking at this stuff. Well, I mean, it's 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 early days. That you know, that's that's you the can't worst rule. kind of McCarthyism. It's like you know what? It's early days. I suspect you're a child molester, Rick, and it's early days. I don't have any proof. No, there's. But I, I've heard some of your enemies say you might be a child molester. That's what Trump. The only thing you have on Trump is a bunch of Democrats, at the uh, saying that they heard something. There's no. There's virtually no issues there at all. Nothing you can prove. According to the sources you listen to. Yeah. What do they say? What, what are the sources you listen to? The, the Washington Post, the New York Times. They don't have any evidence. But let's find out what the evidence is. Well, no, but you can't because there isn't any. You don't know. You, he hasn't released his taxes. Like one possible area that's problematic is like one of the Trump kids, I think it was Don Jr., said that Trump got a shitload of money in financing from Russia, which is a potentially compromising thing. Well, if that's true, let's look into it. That, fair enough. I'll grant you that. Um, All right, let's, let's move on to... We've reached some concord there. Um, 
Do you think Trump will last his uh, administration? The last a full four years? Well, <laughs> the only way that he could, that that, that that would happen is if the Democrats managed to take control of the House and they'll impeach him for, um, He'll, they'll impeach him for, for looking at someone wrong. They, they, it, they, we're no longer working, we're no longer living in, the, in, a, in a fair world anymore where, where parties were doing the right thing. At this point, the Democrats are, are maniacs. They, they, they want to turn the country socialist as quickly as possible. They want to no, get hold rid on, of Hold on, hold on. Let's, let me clarify. I think that non-Trump people, people who don't like Trump, think, feel as if the election, whether this is an a accurate perception or not, they f a lot of people feel as if the election was in some way stolen by a vulgarian and a charlatan. No, I, well, I don't care what other people thought. It's not up to the Democrat Congress to figure out some way to fire a guy because they think he's vulgar. I mean, uh -huh. he, he hasn't done anything to be, to be removed from office. You know, it's, it's... There's no strict set of laws as to what can get you removed. High crimes and misdemeanors are mm -hmm. not specifically defined. Well, no, they are. I mean, if you murder someone, that's a high crime. Yeah, but other, there's a... I've listened to frickin' lawyers and stuff, and a high crime can be any number of things, including how people feel about the way you're doing things. Andrew Johnson, who came after Lincoln, um, had terrible presidential manner. And, um, yeah, but he survived the impeachment. Yeah, but he got impeached. That, but he didn't. He wasn't removed from off, from office because they apparently didn't have anything. Yeah, but they still impeached him. Well, you, you can, can be impeached. You can impeach somebody, but if if there's no possibility that anything's going to happen, then what's the point? What are you saying? I'm saying we're talking about impeachment. Okay, but you know we're talking about removing him from office, and I'm so saying, you're saying that if, he, if he probably can't. He can't be unless you. It, let me tell you something. If the Democrats, the Democrats don't like that they lost. They don't like the will of the people. That bothers them. So it, they're going to get they're going to get their way, and if they take over, they'll impeach Trump for for. Uh, you know, for wearing the wrong color tie. But if he hasn't done anything particularly damning. Well, he hasn't done anything. Because you need a two-thirds vote of the Senate. Okay. So you can impeach him, as you said, yeah. for doing any goddamn thing. All right, well, but the, you can't actually kick him out of office unless 67 senators say. Well, then you know what? He has, you're right. You're right. He'll never, he'll never be impeached then. You're stuck no, with no, him. No, no, no. There's two different things. Years. There's impeachment, and then there's kicking him out of office. Yeah, but, but he'll never get 67 Democrats back in the Senate. It's gone to you. You lost that. It's over. You'll never get them back. So that's it. You're right. You answered your own question. Very good. But there, I mean, there are other ways he can leave office. Nixon, uh, Republicans went to Nixon and said, High-ranking Republicans said, look, you, we no longer have confidence in you. And he agreed it was time for him to go. Well, okay, look. I mean, so Trump, so like, there are other ways Trump can leave off. Okay, and, and, and I'm telling you that since there is nothing, okay, there will not be anything proven that Trump is a Russian uh, oligarch. That's not going to happen. Uh, I don't care what his son said. The, the, it, it's absurd. Uh, and the other thing that you were thinking of impeaching him for was obstruction of justice because he told Comey to uh, give this poor uh, Flynn a break. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's not obstruction of justice because he wasn't the one being investigated by... by uh, uh, he wasn't the one under, under prosecution by the FBI. It was Flynn. Flynn. Wasn't? Yeah. In other oh. words, in other words, if Flynn, oh. if 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 Flynn is the one being, uh, I don't know, attacked by the FBI, and somebody else says to him, "Hey, why don't you go easy on the guy?" That's not obstruction of justice. I don't. It, it, Trump has a it, lot of leverage associated with the office of president. Well, if he's trying to exercise that leverage, I don't know well, what the if, definition... Well, if he was to tell Comey, look, lay off Flynn or I'll fire you, that's obstruction of justice. 
But if he just says the poor guy has been through a lot, while you know he's 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 a he was a trusted public servant, he was a general. I just fired him. It's a shame you keep, this has to keep going. That's not obstruction of justice. That's just talking to somebody. I think where we are in this is we don't know. We don't know all. No, the but that's that's what we know. That's what everybody's agreed was not, said. Well, okay, and then, yeah, yeah. And then, but, and then the other but, thing I, but is, we don't know whether that's obstruction of justice no, it, or not. No, it isn't. I can tell you it isn't. If I Why, because you're you, a lawyer? No, because, because it's, I'm a human being. If I tell you Flynn's had a bad time, it's a shame this has to continue, that's not obstruction yeah, of but justice. If, if, it's only obstruction of justice if he If a guy in a double-breasted suit walks into a candy store and mm -hmm. says, nice candy store, it would be a shame if something were to happen to it. That, that can be seen as extortion. Yeah, but it it you can't you can't hold a guy uh, you can't t put a guy in jail for obstruction of justice because your interpretation is one way when the other two thirds of the country think it's another way. It's too vague. It's not enough. I don't know. I... And and the other thing you were that you were attacking Trump on was that he gave away secrets. To the Russians. Wait, when you say you, week. you're saying you're lumping me in with everybody in the well, world. Well, you want him impeached. I just said some people are talking about impeachment. Well, these are crazy people. There's no evidence that he that he uh, he gave away the you know the the guy from ISIS that. that yeah, I don't that, know what he did. I'm totally underinformed on what well, he alleged. Thank you. Okay, but uh, since I'm underinformed and that. since we've. But I'm not. I've been listening to it all week, and what happened is there's some asshole from, uh, I think, the New York Times. Uh, yeah, but it's... Uh, he, he, he made up, he claims that, that Trump gave away the name of an Israeli spy in ISIS, and everybody in the room that was there said he didn't. And that's the basis of the impeachment. That's the high crime and misdemeanor. I do know. Well, but I do know. Everybody that was in the room. And why haven't says I seen a bunch happened. of shit on? Because my... you listen to the left wing radio, and the only and the only thing CNN wants you to know is that Trump screwed up and he's got to be impeached. You're being brainwashed. I know every detail. I know who was in the room: McMaster, uh, the Secretary of State, Fine, but... Trump, the ambassador from Russia and another high-level Russian official. Also, there was a translator. But I'm not arguing and for impeachment them, at this point. Say, All I'm saying, you're you're say, lumping me in with a few people who are saying, a lot of people talk about it on, in the news, in the news media. Okay. A few Congress people talk about it. All right. But I don't know yet. So, okay. but, so don't attack me for saying that Trump should be impeached. Okay. I mean, I think he's kind of an a-hole. And I think that you think he's kind of an a -hole. I don't think he's an a-hole. I don't. I, 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 there are a number of things he's done that are bothering me. If you want, I'll tell you what they are. Uh, sure. And then okay. we should move on. All right. I'm concerned that he's going to Israel right now, and he's not moving the Israeli embassy to Jerusalem mm -hmm. because he imagines that somehow he can appease the Arabs, and he can't. So you may as well just move the embassy because it's not going to make any difference. They're going to hate Israel, and they're going to hate us just as much as they ever did, whether he does it or not. The second thing that bothers me is he's not forcing that wall to be built. He's got to lean on the on the he's got to lean on the on the Republicans in the Senate and the House to get that wall built. The third thing that bothers me is he's. He's compromised on the uh, health care bill, but I have to say it's, it's, it is moving along. I mean, the Senate can change it too, so they're partly responsible. And it's, it's certainly better than it, than it was uh, three weeks ago. So he's, he's trying on that, but so far I'm not satisfied. So he's waffling a little bit. All right, and also he's got a weird way of pretending to hold hands with Melania without actually holding hands. Well, you're not talking about the most important thing about Melania. She's in the Middle East right now, and unlike uh, those sniveling, groveling cowards uh, and appeasers 
Hillary and uh, and uh, Obama's wife, she didn't wear a hijab. I don't think Michelle wore a hijab either. No, there's a picture of her. Yeah, wearing but she a mostly hijab. didn't, and Trump attacked her for not wearing a hijab, right? No. I think there's a tweet about that. No, I never heard any such thing. No, I mean Melania is going there bareheaded. Yeah, I think there's, and, I think the Michelle Democrats, was over there bareheaded at least part of the time. I, all right, I see a picture of her with, with one, and I also know that Hillary wore one. So to me, right there, you, you've got a, a, you know, you've got a, a president that, that, that isn't confused and, and traitorous. I don't know. I think, I think Michelle didn't wear one, and Trump thought that was not right. But anyway, I don't know. Let's move on to the next frickin' thing. All right. Can, we, can you just tell us about where you are with the painting real quick, Lance? I don't think we're talking about Well, it's, it's not all that interesting. Uh, I'm just, I just moved down and I laid in some very rough eyes. And, it, okay, it, it looks like things are being accomplished, and that is uncovering square footage. But the truth is these are vastly inferior to what they're going to be. But you have to get something down, and then you got to play around with it. So um, that's all that's happening. I have I have I have placeholders for what the ultimate quality will be. Why yeah. do you have so many brushes, by the way? I'm just curious. Okay. Um, well, let me add one thing. It kind of yeah. looks like there's a vagina on the side of my head Where? right there. Where's the vagina? Right there. That's a head vagina. Oh, nice. Okay. But that'll go away. Fair enough. Hey. That's a good segue into the uh, the uh, in terms of the hats. What, tell us what do you what do you think about those? The vagina hats. Yeah, the vagina hats. The pussy hats. Oh, I you t you talk first. Right? Well, I went on the march. I didn't wear a pussy you hat. You went or, on the march. I did. Because women are being oppressed, Rick. Just, I'm not a fan of Trump's social agenda. What's his social agenda that hurts women? Well, all right, so there's nothing, of, the, the social agenda that hurts women includes stuff that hurts people in general. Um, first of all, he said a bunch of stuff that he's, he's apparently, he's been accused of assaulting women. Oh, for he's God's been, sake. He, he has been. He's been accused of assaulting women. This is the guy that voted for Hillary Clinton, whose husband was accused yeah, of he, raping three women? Okay, so, yeah, but he's, Hillary hasn't been accused of, of raping three women. Yeah, but she covered for a guy that did. That's almost as bad. If she didn't rape three women. Yeah, but why didn't she? But if, if, right. if wait right. a minute, if, if, if but, Carol was out, your wife was out raping men, would you, would you be, would you just... Would you still be a great guy if you did nothing about it? We'd have to go to, to some couples counseling. <laughs> All right, so he, he said horrible shit about pussy grabbing. Um, he, he's, Wait he, a minute, I he's, deflected you. I actually got you from whether Trump assaulted women over to the Clintons. We get back to Trump. There's zero evidence that Trump needed to assault anybody. That's, that's absurd. It's like, where do you pull these things? Where do you Democrats get these Freakish from stories. the media, like he's from he's six he's women. He's now he doesn't have the fifty-two or no sixty women who. What do you, do you think? Cosby drugged and assaulted women. Yeah, I do. Okay, I so do. I mean, it's it's. I'm not a. It's not a court of law, but that's really weird to have sixty women say the yeah, same. Yeah, it, it's statistically brutal. Um, you know, with Trump, there are fewer women, and the alleged offenses are not anything near Cosby's. Well, I'll tell you, I'll never believe it because I, I, don't know any, I don't know any billionaires that need to assault women. Well, what about Tiger Woods? He's almost a billionaire, and he didn't really assault women, no. but he was really bad at getting laid. No, he was great at it. Yeah, but what I it, heard was that a lot of those women were with him even though they didn't know that he was a successful I athlete. Know. He just, his game seemed bad. It seemed just based on... People bringing women to him, and he had he'd get with anybody, even you know, like just. I mean, his wife was is you know is a is a was a huge model, and uh, he just seemed to just get with random women be okay. just because he could. Yeah. But uh, anyway, this makes this makes him like 
every other guy I've met practically. I know. Most other guys. I just, people, But go he ahead. wasn't used to having to get over on people, so he, he developed no actual skills. Well, you know, the funny or thing, judgment. Well, the, the funny thing is, the really handsome guys that I've met that were really charming and handsome, they they don't have any any skill with talking to women either, because they don't have to develop it. They just they just had to look over and be lit properly, so that's not a surprise. Okay. Funny thing happened in the way to the circus, by the way. No, let's let's stay on this for oh, a while. Okay. Sure. Um, so, so guys, social, well, guys that are really handsome are lousy at picking up girls. They, well, they, I mean, they, they don't have... They don't have any game, but they, they, they just sit there and the women come to them. The, one, the guys that are really sneaky are the ones that, that, that you know, don't have much physical appeal. You've, you've had to, to develop, develop skills, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's possible that Trump, given his wealth and... Um, He's a good-looking guy, too, when he was younger. Uh, in, a, in a kind of... Never had to worry about a thing. Uh, well, I mean, his hair got weird kind of early, and he was, he was, he's always been a little soft. He doesn't, seem, he doesn't exercise. He says that waving his arms around <laughs> while giving speeches is, is exercise. Yeah, he never had to worry about getting girls. That, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, that, that he needed to assault anybody. Well, In fact, that's what that whole argument hold on, was. Hold on, there's an argument against that argument, which is guys who don't have to worry about getting girls often also lack judgment about what constitutes consent. Okay. Somebody who thinks he's always getting consent may think he's getting consent when he's not. Let me ask you a question, Rick. Do you want to live in a world where if they can find six women to say you did something to them, then that's it? They believe it? I mean, is that, is that the new standard we have? If, if you were running for senator of California, they could find six women that would say you assaulted them. Is that how you want the world to be now? Because every single Republican candidate that has a penis is going to be accused of assaulting women for the rest of time. I don't know about that. And I've got a defense. I've been on the pills I take to keep my hair, make my dick work terribly. So. <laughs> so you know, I, I gotta, you know, that, I gotta hand it to you. That was probably the, the most powerful revelation that we've had in this whole thing. Um, I, I, I hope everyone watching notes that. I yeah, mean, I mean it, it, it's, it's, it's there's there's no. I mean, it's a chore. But anyway, um, just the social programs that he wants to reduce. Okay. What about affect them? everyone, particularly, you know, the the people who aren't the one percent. You know, the 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 rejiggering or replacement of. Obamacare mm -hmm. will affect you know, tens of millions of people. Okay, Obama. Now, we can argue about whether it'll help tens of millions of people or fuck over tens of millions of people, but it will certainly affect tens of millions of people. Yeah, but, but right now, Obamacare is collapsing all well, over the country. It, yeah, but like the Republicans it's, it's like failing. to give it little pushes no, where no, they but can. No, it, it was failing on its own. It, right now, we I know there, there was never any on its own. There were a bunch of Republicans who decided not to take additional like Medicare funds, and I mean they Republicans have been pushing against it since it was. Past. Rick, my friend, uh, what is happening is all over the country. We right now, as of this uh, uh, episode, Obamacare has not been replaced by a Republican plan, and all over the United States, Obamacare is failing. And that's they, part, they are, at least and are, that's in large part. I don't know what percent the, the, the part, the to, to recalcitrant. Republican no, policy the, no, the, and governor. The, 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 it's the, not all just some natural thing. The insurance companies are pulling out because they can't, they're not, it's not logical. It's not making them any profits. So all over the country, there, there, there are places where you can't even buy insurance. The thing is imploding. It, it's it imploding has, in large part because, Republic, because Republicans haven't let any corrective measures be performed on Obamacare. Because rather they what? say that they'll replace it and then they'll 
they'll try to come up with something that works. And because a lot of Republican governors didn't go along with the f all aspects of the program. Yeah, I, d I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think. Yeah, but what's, fucking, what's, I don't know, Google what's, what's, or what's, Snopes or uh, what's, fucking. First of all, Snopes is is a uh, is a liberal uh, propaganda thing funded by George Soros. All right, so fine. I don't, I don't so, believe Snopes anymore. But my okay. point is, is that. Is that um, I don't, how do you, the reason Obamacare says, the reason says, Obamacare is failing is because you're relying on millions of people in their twenties to buy yeah, it, and, they and they're not it. buying yeah. it because they don't that's, need it. That's one of the reasons, but that's, but it's but that's a good reason. Yeah, but that's only I don't know what percent of the problem is that's, that. That's a huge percentage. It's it's all based on having the healthy people pay for the sick people. And the healthy people, in this case, aren't signing up for it. It was a stupid idea, and so it's failing all over the country. It's not the only idea, and it's not, it's not unfixable. But the whole thing's going to get thrown out, and you're going to get a new system that fucks over people. Well, I, now, I, I, know, I know some people were fucked over under Obamacare. I don't know that it was a huge number of millions of people. It was millions. It was millions, because... There were millions of people, we've had this discussion, like myself, that, that couldn't afford to buy the Obamacare and couldn't afford to pay the fine. So it was a terrible All right, idea. You've, okay, let's and wrap really this up because you, you said we've talked about this before. So yeah, let's, let's, let's move on to some something. other shit. Okay. And let, let's step away, turn off the camera, and we'll start All again. Right. I wanted us to talk about animal cruelty. The uh, Ringling Brothers is wrapping up after a f 147 years in business. Um, among the reasons why, you know, they can't use elephants or any tigers anymore because it's just too brutal for the animals. Which leads to the overall question of animal cruelty. We kill, I think, in America about 40 billion chickens a year. And I'm sure hundreds of millions of, of cattle and uh, hogs. And, you know, there's there's a lot of suffering, but the question is, does any of it matter? Because, yeah, a chicken suffers through its short life in a, in a cage with its beak clipped. And then, I don't know, it gets its throat slashed or a cow gets the, you know, the elect electric hammer to the head. And, but they're dead, so like, does any of their suffering matter? Because all their suffering, I would think, is erased when, when their brain is erased. Um, and the only really guide to this is the golden rule. Because we know that we wouldn't want to suffer like the, a chicken or a cow or a hog raised in inhumane conditions. But we can't even answer the question as to whether really that suffering matters. And if it doesn't matter for a chicken or a cow or a hog, does human suffering matter when the human passes away from existence? Lance? Well, I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Jew, and uh, first of all, I'm a vegetarian, so I'm out of this uh, issue. Uh, but um, Your shoes aren't out of the issue. Yeah, well, and you know, you could, an animal could die, and you could cut its hide off. So um, I think that, it, according to the Jewish religion, part of the kosher laws are that you have to kill the animal incredibly humanely, uh, and that's that's part of our tradition. When they when they uh, slit the animal's throat, the knife is so sharp that it feels no pain and it just goes to sleep, it just bleeds to death. So even even you know, thousands of years ago, the Bronze Age Jews, or whoever created these uh, kosher laws, it may have been later, uh, had some understanding of, of the importance of treating the animals well. I, I believe they treated their beasts of burden. Uh, even the beasts of burden weren't supposed to work on the Sabbath. Do you, so the, do you want so the government dictating to you how you should treat? I mean, it's a faith issue. But well, do you want the, the government to tell you how you should treat animals? That's, I think yeah, that's you do. Issue. You do. I mean, you, okay. you, you, the government does. Was, there are plenty of laws against cruelty to animals. 
Uh, I mean, that's that's part of the Western tradition at this point. We do have that. They don't have it in. They don't have these laws in Africa, I don't think. But they they they've certainly had them here for a while. And as far as the uh, Ringling Brothers go, I can't imagine they couldn't figure out a way of treating elephants humanely. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm sure the elephants were having a good time. Well, you know, who says I that they want to run around? They were getting pulled around by elephant hooks and getting whapped. Yeah, and... but those, they don't feel a thing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an elephant. They're leathery. I mean, I, I, you know what? They feel I think all sorts of emotion. They mourn their dead. Yeah, I understand. And they're probably happy. They're probably a lot happier in, in the uh, circus than they are, you know, running around in Africa, not wonder, not knowing whether they're going to get enough food or, or water. I don't know. They're going in trailer trucks and, and trains. And, 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 getting, and getting shot by poachers. Well, they're not cognizant of, of I don't know. I, just... I, I think we could have treated them humanely, and I think it's a bunch of crazy, liberal, leftist, animal rights activists that were acting like a bunch of lunatics like they always do. Yeah, but they got Ringling Brothers on tape, you know, like being assholes to their elephants on hidden camera. Okay, well then you know what you do? You go in and you be nicer to the elephants. That's, I mean, if, if that's... Yeah, well, why are people such fucking idiots now? I mean, if you read the letters from the Civil War, people were infinitely more articulate, more thoughtful, I mean, they, they yeah, were... Yeah, but we'd still beat their asses on IQ tests. Well, I don't care. Then, then, I, then I don't care. I, I and think, if you put people and, in, and, if you took Civil War people and put them in an escape room versus people from now, we'd beat them most of the time. An escape room? It's, it's this dumb fucking party activity where you take a, you and your friends get together and you get locked in a room and you have to solve puzzles to get out. How do you know that they wouldn't be as good? They're the more, they were far, people were far more resourceful in those days. I mean, they, they were far more resourceful, they were far more articulate, as the politicians were infinitely more intelligent, the, their, their philosophy was, was clearer. I mean, they were wrong about slavery, but, but they, they loved their country, they loved freedom. They're not like the little socialists running around today. These goddamn little social justice warriors that are 22 don't know a damn thing about life or politics or the world. I wouldn't trust them to, to, to go to the mailbox. Well, politics is a swamp right now. No, it's not. It's it doesn't a swamp. interact it's with us. It's a that swamp thing. if you've been brainwashed by the socialists. Oh, do you love who holds public office right now? I, you know what? I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in Trump. But I do love Ted Cruz, and I do like Trump, and he might turn out to be fine. But let's talk about, I mean, the, the frickin', I mean, there aren't a lot of profiles in courage in the Senate right now. There are not. You're right about that. All right, and I think maybe we wrap at this point, go to another thing. Yeah, okay. What's Director? our next topic, J.D.? And we'll, 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 let's, let me step out and we'll right. shut down the camera for a sec. Okay.